What's up, YouTube? Uh, welcome to my first tier list video. Today I'm rating the mice that I've used so far. And while making this tier list, I realized that I've only used Razer or Logitech products, and that was not on purpose. I'm not a fanboy, it's just the mice that I happen to get. <laughs> and obviously, this tier list is my own opinion, and I will be adding onto this tier list as I make more reviews and maybe make some adjustments. I don't know. But let's get right into it. So the first mouse that we have is the Death Adder Chroma. It's going into the C tier. Just because it's not a bad mouse, it's just not meta anymore. It's not light. It's a heavy mouse with RGB. And the reason why it's not in Don't Buy is because if you want a heavy mouse with RGB, then I would recommend the Death Adder Chroma because it was fun while it lasted. Next we have the G403. It's going into the B tier just because it's another ergonomic mouse similar to the Death Adder Chroma, but it is more comfortable. But the only reason why it's not on A tier is because it lasted about three months before it died. I think the switches uh, just stopped registering for me, but it is the most comfortable mouse on this list. And if Logitech was to make a G403 super light, it'd probably be one of the best mice of all time. Next we have the G305, I think. Um, this is going into the don't buy tier because I don't know why everyone buys this mouse as like their first gaming mouse and I think it just leaves a bad impression like they think it's so good but it's actually it's, it's not it's just not it's heavy the switches feel mushy and it's just not a good mouse uh, I did not have a good time with this mouse I think I bought a new mouse within a month and yeah I was just really disappointed in Logitech because I came from the G403 which I was really happy with uh, so if you are thinking about it getting a budget mouse don't get the G305 because it's just not it next we have the original G Pro this is going into C tier just because the super light is out and um, I think it's just a couple like maybe like 20 bucks more for a super light and it's just way better than the original g pro uh the only plus side the g pro has is probably the dpi button and the rgb but other than that it's just like why would you even get this mouse anymore back when i had the g pro the super light wasn't the thing so it was my favorite mouse at the time and i would have put it at a tier but now since the super light is out it's going down into the c tier Next we have the Razer Orochi V2 and this mouse is the first mouse going into my seal of approval just because it is one of my favorite mice of all time for the price. It's like $80 or something and the switches are so like they feel better than the Super Light 2 switches and the side buttons as well are so much better than the Super Light 2 switches. The only problem with this mouse is that it uses a battery for charging but honestly it's not even that big of a deal because you just put in a new battery and it's good for like the next three weeks. Um, if Razer was to make a, a Razer Orochi Pro with this same shape and like the same everything and just charging inside a battery, like it'd probably be one of the best mice of all time. I thought I was going to hate the egg shape when I ordered this mouse, but no, it was the opposite. It's probably one of my favorite shapes of all time and uh, it just feels so good to have in your hand. Obviously, if you have bigger hands, it might not feel as good. I think I have pretty average sized hands, but I feel like you just, everyone just needs to try out this mouse. Like it's so underrated just because it's a mouse that uses a battery. People automatically think it's not gonna be good. And just because it's cheap as well, people think it's not gonna be good, but it's probably one of my favorite mice of all time. And if I was to be stranded on an island and I had $80 to spend, I would probably buy this mouse right here. Next we have the Razer Viper V2 Pro. This is also going to my seal of approval because there's just nothing wrong with the mouse. The Viper V2 Pro is, it just feels like an upgraded version of the Razer Orochi V2. Um, the clicks feel nice, side buttons are nice, shape is nice, glides are nice. It's just a good mouse, like there's nothing wrong with it. That's why it's going to my seal of approval. Next we have the Death Adder V3 Pro. This is going into A tier just because it's the same as the Viper V2 Pro but the switches are a tiny bit mushier. The only reason why I get the Death Adder V3 Pro over the Viper V2 Pro is if you are into more ergonomic mice rather than symmetrical mice. But personally for me, I would rather have a more of an aggressive shape than a relaxed shape. That's why the Death Adder is below the Viper. It's also a bit heavier, but 
it's not enough to feel a difference. But yeah, I think I just enjoyed the Viper more than the Death Adder. Now, last but not least, we have the Super Light 2. This is going into, I think, above the Death Adder here. It's not seal of approval because it has its flaws, but it's also not a bad mouse. It's kind of just mid. I think I prefer the super light shape over the viper shape, but in terms of, uh, you know, side buttons and switches and scroll wheel, I think I do prefer the viper more than the super light 2, but I'd also get the super light 2 over the death adder v3. That's why it's going in between the viper and the death adder in a tier the only reason why it's not going into the seal of approval tier is because it has its flaws like the side buttons are really mushy and these skates are terrible but you know it is durable and reliable though so that's why it's not going into the b tier so yeah this is my tier list so far if you have any questions let me know in the comments down below and uh yeah we'll be adding on to this tier list as i make more reviews but other than that that's it see ya